85% of the food we eat comes from large farms like this. On 2,700 acres, Gerald Tumbleson grows only two crops, corn and soy. He was hoping that Monsanto's genetic technology could help him get rid of a big pest, the European corn borer caterpillar. They burrow into the stalk and then it rots the inside of the stalk. They burrow into the shank that holds the ear and it rots that, and the wind comes up and the corn falls off. Now, to keep that from happening, if we spray our field with an insecticide. But we can't get selective. We spray for an insect, and we might get four or five that we don't want dead, and we've killed them. Monsanto had a solution to sell, corn which made its own pesticide. Scientists had long known that a humble soil bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt, produced toxins that killed caterpillars. Monsanto scientists spliced the bacterial gene that made the toxin into corn. Now, every cell of the modified corn makes its own pesticide, a chemical protein harmless to most insects and to humans whose bodies rapidly break it down, but lethal to the corn borer caterpillar. If you've ever been around here when you've sprayed an insecticide, if you've ever used that, we put it on, we put you know, leather gloves on and, 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 and uh, coveralls on so it doesn't get on us. That is not a fun thing. That is not something I even want to dream about. I don't even want the thing in my machine shed with my grandkids around. But those are the types of things we don't have to have with this BT corn. Welcome to Full Belly Farm. It's very different from most modern industrial farms. Instead of two crops, California farmer Paul Muller grows 70 on just 200 acres. And everything is grown organically. There is one product that Muller uses from time to time to control pests, something that's pitted him against the biotech industry, the organic pesticide known as Bt. The Bt that we use is very specific. It uh, doesn't have a very long life. And we use it sparingly. We may only spray a field like this once once a year, once a season, and we don't use it unless we have to. Monsanto says this is a leap forward. We're ending pesticides. Well, yes and no. Yes, they're ending the use of pesticides, but now they're introducing more toxin than they ever introduced with pesticides. You have to think of that corn now as a factory producing toxin. And, say critics, this toxin will cause a worse problem, resistant pests. It's not a new problem. Pesticides have never killed every last pest in a field. There's always a small number with genetic variations that resist the poison. Because these survivors eventually repopulate the entire field with resistant descendants, over time, pesticides stop working. A field of BT corn potentially makes this situation worse. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, the corn puts out BT, killing most, but not all, corn borers. The resistant survivors soon repopulate the field. The BT is now ineffective against those pests. By engineering BT into corn, they're taking a tool away from farmers over the long haul. That BT will disappear as an effective tool for a farmer like me to use. The EPA has mandated a refuge. For every field of BT crops, farmers must plant a section with non-BT crops, a place where non-resistant pests can live. Because these pests will mate with resistant pests, the refuge should ensure continuing generations of susceptible bugs. But are farmers really setting aside valuable land to be devoured by insects? It's the EPA's job to check up on them. We hold the biotechnology companies responsible. They have to provide us with uh, reports, they have to monitor, uh, and uh, if we found that they were not complying uh, with the terms of conditions, then we would um, uh, revoke their license. The growers themselves self-police this system. They recognize the long-term value in, in insect control without insecticides. 
how many farmers are actually creating these refuges. I know that they have licensing agreements where they're supposed to, but you cross America and ask how many farmers are actually spending the time to build these elaborate refuges in their farms. Maybe in some of the test farms that you're in, they will say they are. But I know I've talked to enough farmers that say that it's too much time and trouble to do it.